and we're going to we're going to start with a little role play this morning. So I've sort of sort of got two helpers that I don't know if they're willing or not. But Sam and Cam, can you guys come out here? Okay, so Sam, can you get that box over there, please, and bring it here? I'm going to set up a situation, and these guys, you actually got a microphone. So, Cam, can you grab that mic? Sam, put that up here. And you can use that mic. Now, Sam, it's important that... Where do my, yeah, can you get the camo... Put that camo mask and cap on. You can put the cap on backwards if you like and put the mask on the front of your face. Um, you're going to need that because what you're doing is very dangerous. Okay, so I'm going to paint the story, right? Andy Lawrence has had a very stressful morning this morning because on her way here she got a text message that something of very precious to her has been catnapped. I, I, if, I think you got this photo on your, on your... Can we put this photo up, please? I think that creature, that photo, that's proof of life. Now, I believe that that cat's name is River. And River has been taken hostage, right? And, and the ransom is $100,000. And that was very stressful to you on the way here this morning. So you did a, a GoFundMe page and you've raised a total of $16 <laughs> from all of Australia to get your cat back. So you've realised that you're not going to be able to come up with $100,000 you are meant to have here this morning to get your cat back, which is in here, that this hostage taker has kidnapped, <laughs> right? Yes. So what we're doing is very dangerous, but we're going to send in a hostage negotiator. And in real life, you're a doctor, but just today you're a hostage negotiator, right? You've got to talk this person out of... There is actually a real live animal in here, by the way. I will show you it in a moment. Um, you've got to talk... You've got to talk this person out of giving themselves up not getting $100,000 and giving the animal back. Um, and you've got to try to go for the 100000 So have it, have it just, you talk him into it. Come on, come on, Cam, come on, you can do that. As a doctor, you've seen many difficult situations. <laughs> Hi there, my name's Cameron. I'm just here to make sure everything goes okay here, that everyone gets out of here safely. Uh, what's your name? Bill. Bill. Nice to meet you, Bill. Now, what can we do for you? What do you want today? 100 grand. 100 grand. What are you willing to give me for that 100 grand? This specimen. Now, what that, do you know what that specimen's name is? Nope. No? It's River. <laughs> River. Okay. Now, did you know River has a family? They've yep. got children. They need to take care of those children. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with this cat being taken away from its family? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> is there anything we can get for you while now, we're having this now, discussion? You, you've got to somehow get him to trust you. So what are you going to do for him to trust you? Because you're trying to give, him up, give it all up. So what are you going to do to get him to trust you? <laughs> now, we're willing to work with you here, but uh, it's going to take a while to get that money together. Uh, so far, we've got $16. So <laughs> on that rate, it's going to probably take... 16 months. Are you okay if we take a little bit of time to get that money together? I don't think so. <laughs> no? Okay, what kind of time frame are we looking at here? Uh, we're willing to work with you here. <laughs> one hour. We just, we, <laughs> one hour. Okay. Uh, can we get maybe four hours? It's going to take us a while. We need to, to maybe source two. some more. Two hours. Okay. <laughs> I, I, somehow I don't think this is going to work, right? <laughs> so maybe if you just hand back the animal back to, yeah. In the box? No, no, box? Take it, it's, it's in a cage. Yeah. So just maybe deliver the cage to Andy. Oh, River <laughs> looks a bit different. This, I, I don't know. What, what, what happened to River? He had a haircut. 
He's had a haircut. I'm sure that was River when he... Who likes ferrets, by the way? Who doesn't like ferrets? Great. There you go. Can you look after him? Thank you. No, it's OK. We'll, we'll get rid of him. Thanks, boys. I appreciate your help there. Can you just pop it over there, Stan? Thanks. Surely there had to be some reason for that. I'm still trying to work it out. But, but getting, getting someone to trust you does not start with trying to convince them that you're trustworthy or that you are right. See, the, the negotiator was right, the hostage taker was wrong, but trying to convince them to do the right thing they have to trust you and, and trust doesn't start with trying to show someone you're, you're trustworthy. In fact, trust begins by someone believing that you actually understand them. If someone doesn't understand you, you will not trust them. If they, if they don't know what matters to you, what, what you're feeling and why, People won't trust you. There is a real-life FBI hostage negotiator, one of the world's most famous hostage negotiators for 25 years. His name's Chris Voss, and he wrote this book, and it's a brilliant book, and it's called Never Split the Difference. It's all about negotiating. And um, in it, he writes, As I have worked with executives and students to develop these skills, I always try to reinforce the message that being right isn't the key to success, no, successful negotiation. Having the right mindset is. And, and when he's talking about the right mindset, he's talking about this deep empathy, this, this listening to learn what the other person is thinking and feeling and what's motivating them and why they're doing what they're doing. Um, it's actually understanding the other person and here's the, the point to it, it's, it's letting them know that you understand about them. Because you may be able to understand about someone, but if you don't communicate that you understand, they'll struggle to trust you. And we do a Growing to Maturity course here at Red Gum and we're going to do another one a little bit later in the year. And, and we do a little role play in that and it's called Loving Listening. And it's listening to really hear the other person's heart. And when Solomon wrote Proverbs 18, I think he was probably writing it to help everyone on social media. Because he, he wrote this and he said this, anyone who gives an answer before he hears, or some translations say listens, is foolishness and shame to him. And when Solomon used the word that is translated hears or listens, when he, when he used the word, he used a Hebrew word, shama. And its fullest, richest meaning is understands. The one who answers without understanding is an idiot. That's basically what he would, was, was saying. And the Bible only describes three types of people. There are wise people, there are fools, and there are evil people, people that are just intent on causing you harm. It's foolish to respond to someone without first gaining understanding. And Solomon, he, he, he makes it really personal in that verse when he, when he talks about that truth and then he says... And it brings shame or reproach to you. And, and one Bible translation says it's both stupid and embarrassing. Now, my dad would never call someone by a nickname. Dad liked to give someone the fullest respect and he would, he would call them by their proper name. And I can remember introducing one of my mates to dad. He's a little bit older than me and... His name was Warren Ross, and we just called him Rossy. And, and I introduced Rossy to Dad one day, and Dad put out his hand to shake his hand and says, pleased to meet you, Ross. That's like saying, pleased to meet you, Raymond, <laughs> you know, instead of Lex. He, Dad, 
Dad was trying to be noble, but he, he didn't understand. And so he called him by his surname instead of we'd introduced him as Rossi. And Dad had this noble intent, but it came out wrong. And James, the brother of Jesus, in, in chapter 1, verse 19, writes, Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. Angry is a response. Answering is a response. Speaking is a response. Um, and James is saying, listen, listen, really listen to understand before you respond. And when Solomon, he used the word answers, the, the Hebrew word that he used then, it, it's, it's a noble response he's talking about. It, it literally means to restore someone. It's, it's answering to refresh someone. It's, to, it's a sound, to bring someone back from a dark place um, to help them return. But if you're going to help someone, they need to trust you. That's the starting point. If, if they don't feel you understand them, they won't trust you. They won't let you help them. And, and you won't trust someone if they don't understand what you feel, what you think, what you need, what you desire, or what, what causes you fear. Now... When my gorgeous coral was about 16, 17, I was nearly 18, I was, I was trying to win her mother's approval. She didn't have a dad. Her dad had died when she was nine. And we were out at her uncle's farm. And her mother had this little green Mazda. And I was driving it in the paddock. And she was in the back seat. And we're just going along a little track back to the farmhouse. And there was a dip down this little hill and she says she's in the back seat she says Lex don't go down there what's Lex gonna do I'm, I'm 18 I'm, a, I'm an idiot so I just went down this steep little bit she's in the back seat behind me and she just goes whack and she be right across the, the ear right if you knew Coral's mum that was so out of but fear fear right just grabbed her in that moment and she didn't trust me and I got this bang across the side of the head later when I asked her what she thought about the idea of Coral and I getting married I can remember her looking at me with this terrible steely eyes and she said only if God changes you a real lot because <laughs> right? she didn't trust me because I didn't understand what caused her fear? Dr. Henry Cloud has written this book on trust. It's a, it's a fantastic book. And in it, he describes five essentials. They're, they're ingredients that without trust, just, just it won't work. And he begins this, this list of five with understanding. I don't think I would have started with the word Understanding, I think maybe I instinctively understood it, but I don't think I would have started there. But when we trust, because we're all wired to trust, we want to trust people. When we trust people, oxytocin's released, and, and we want to trust people, and we want people to trust us. It's a big deal when you feel trusted by someone. It feels good. But if they don't understand you, or if you don't understand them. And I have a little confession to make this morning for the last 24 years Coral and I together have watched on TV nearly every episode of Survivor for 24 years every episode right and the only constant that I've discovered who is talking what the only, the only constant that I've discovered in watching over that 24 years is that the people who win, they choose the right people to trust. Sometimes it's a bit of luck. But trust is, is like 
in a game of deception, trust is actually the, the greatest currency of survivor is trust. And once, once someone on your tribe doesn't trust you, they will, the tribe will cancel, try to get rid of you. I've even seen people sort of um, deliberately lose immunity challenge to be able to get rid of someone off their tribe they don't trust. They're just driven to get rid of them. But even more important than that is actually having people trust you. And the problem in that is that the people that win, they have people that trust them, but the person that win is driven and motivated by one thing, getting the million dollars. And yet people trust them and help them get to that million dollars. But the motives means that the people who trusted them in the end still get burnt. Motives are a big deal. And they're the second part of these five ingredients that trust is dependent upon. Motivation, motives, why people do what they do. See, people can do all the right things for all the wrong reasons and you'll get burnt. And old mate James, when he's, when he's writing James in chapter 4, he asks this really big question. It's a relational question. It's, it's a fantastic question. And this is what he says in James 4. What causes fights and quarrels among you? And he's writing to Jewish Christians. He's not writing to Aussies, Australians living in the outback, in the desert, opal miners. He's not writing to them. But that question applies to them just the same as it did to those Jewish readers of James and to us. And I personally know two outback opal miners. And they knew each other really well. They, they trusted each other. They worked together for years and years. They understood each other and they were motivated to help each other. And then their relationship was devastated because one of them changed their motivation from we to me. And the tragedy of the story is that it was a father and son. And when the son got a new partner, that extra person changed the son's motivation and it all became about Instead of we, it was about them and, and this big conflict happened and, and they don't talk to this day. And it's just tragic. And it's what happens when we get our motives wrong, we can get burnt. And, and James in writing and asking this question, he says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. It's not, it's we kill Friendships, we kill family relationships, we, 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 we destroy things that are precious to us. He says, you desire, but you do not have. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. In all relationships, motives are a big deal. They're a big deal to God. But see, God has an advantage. He can see what our motives are. But people can say all the right things to you, but you can't always see at the time their motives. It comes out eventually, but we can't always see it. Every day... You and I have to deal with scammers that are trying to get stuff from us. And most of the time, it's just annoying and you can see through it. But with the development of AI and being able to clone your voice or someone's voice that you love, as the scammers get a lot more sophisticated, as evil people get more sophisticated, it's going to be a lot harder. But the really painful, really hurtful times when our trust is betrayed, it's not scammers. 
It's someone we are friends with, someone that's in our family. It could be a business arrangement, a, a, a business deal. They're the really painful ones. And what happens in those situations, it's, it's usually the motives, where that person is starting to care more about their interests and their needs than yours. <clears throat> when someone's motives are good and they're right, they care about what happens to you. They care, they understand, and they actually put your good ahead of a whole lot of other things. And when Jesus was, was asked on this occasion to deconstruct all of the known Bible of that time into just one sentence, he couldn't do it. He gave them two sentences and he said this, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbour as yourself. In the days just after the fires that destroyed so much of Sarsfield and other areas around here, just in the days after that, there were churches that stepped in to help and, and, uh, I, and they posted on Facebook what they were doing to help the community. And what, and what they were doing was brilliant and it's fantastic and it's great and wonderful, but that's what we should do if we are going to love our neighbour. But Jesus wasn't giving us instructions on what we should do, but why. And when he, when he begins by how we respond to God, it's a list of instructions of what to do. Love God with all your... It, it's, it's very clear instructions. This is, this is what you do to respond to God. But to respond to a neighbour, which is someone in strife, someone that's hurting, someone that's in pain. Jesus didn't tell us what to do. He gave us the motivation. The reasoning behind it is to do it as if you love them like you love yourself. There's no instructions. We get to work that out. And when you love someone as much as you love yourself, your motives are pure. They're clean. They're not sort of contaminated by strings attached or something that is a little bit self-serving, even putting photos on Facebook. I have a, I have a friend, I, I breed or have bred and still breed birds, and I've got a whole chunk of them, little scarlets. They're, they're a little desert bird out of central Australia. And I have a friend in the bird world, and every now and then over the years, he would ring me up and say, Lex, I've got these really good birds. I've got this pair of birds. You've got to buy them. They're beautiful. And he would tell me all the good reasons why I should buy them off him. And I'd buy them. And they wouldn't sit on the eggs. They would pluck the feathers off their babies. They, they were, he was getting rid of them because they're no good. But he would talk me into it. And after a while, I got to not trust him. We're still friends. But I didn't trust his words because it was, had strings attached. It was manipulative. It was, he's trying to get rid of them onto me. And it hurts from a friend and it's not nice. And that can happen in any area of life. And sadly, it can happen in church. Encouraging people to volunteer, to give to to God, to give to a church, to um, respond to the Holy Spirit. All those things are noble things, but they can be manipulated. And we have to be just so careful that our motives behind what we do. See, in, in Matthew, Matthew records Jesus talking about how we respond to need, to fires, to floods, to people in strife, to someone that just needs help. He says this, don't let your left hand know what your, your right hand is. is, is don't, don't be ignorant about what your left and right hand is doing. When I was trying to learn piano, Philip, I was really good at not knowing what my left and my right hands were doing. Had no clue. 
But that's not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about our motives. And he says, when, not if, but when you give, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets or on social media to be honoured by men. See, that, Jesus is talking about the motives, doing all the right things for all the wrong reasons. And, and motives are a really big deal. There are many amazing people in red gum, and I get a little front row seat sometimes to see what people do for other people, and it's breathtakingly beautiful. I'm in awe of the quality of people in this village and what you do for each other quietly that no one ever sees. And they do it with just such a pure heart. And, and it's just fantastic. And, and even 18 months after the fires, there was a team of people here in Bairnsdale quietly helping people in our community. And nine months after the fires, someone posted this on Red Gum's Facebook page. I'm just going to read it to you. And this is what they said. Out of the blue, deliveries of firewood in a time of need and special deliveries for Father's Day for two unwell fathers. That's what church should be about. Thank you. What we do is important because it makes a difference in people's lives. We had the privilege of having over $100,000 go through our hands into 120 families in this community after the fires, quietly helping them. It's important what we do, but what motivates us is even more significant, especially when it comes down to the question, can I trust you? Should I trust you? There are three other ingredients, we're not going to go into them today, of what trust is built upon, but I'm just going to get them to go up on the screen. These, these are the other ones. So you have understanding is the first, the motive of what people do, their ability, their character is a big one, and their track record. And I'll just finish with this story. Two and a half months ago, someone here in Red Gum lost their wallet. And it had a significant amount of money in it. And it's just been returned to them. Now, the person who did that had to be a trustworthy person. And it would have begun with them finding the wallet and then understanding someone's lost their wallet, this is a big deal to them, and seeing through the other person's eyes, understanding the other person, what this would have meant to them. It began with understanding the other person, and then they were motivated to help this other person. They could have put the cash in their pocket and still dropped the wallet back. They had to have the ability to actually get it back to the person, know how to do that. They had to have the character that would not pocket the cash. And they had to have a track record because it wouldn't have been the first time they'd been a person of integrity. They would have been living a life of integrity or it would have been too tempting to pocket the money that was in that. See, trustworthy people. It's a powerful thing when you can trust someone and when someone trusts you, let's pray. God, I thank you that you have wired us to trust people, that every significant relationship in our life is based on trust. To relate to you is all about trust. You say that without faith it's impossible to please God, without trust, without trusting you. And I thank you that there are ways to trust there's wisdom, there's understanding, there's principles. Sometimes, God, we just have to rely on your spirit guiding us. Is this someone I can trust? 
And I also thank you, God, that even when our trust has been betrayed, you have ways to restore and heal and to help us go forward because it can be so painful. I thank you that trust is such a big part of our life and you want to help us grow and do it your way in the safest way. I thank you that you are for us and you want us to trust you. I thank you for that.